Leaning in here at an angle, press this in. Giving it time to cut. Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. In the last episode we talked about spiraling and texturing uh, tools, so if you missed that one, click on the link to, uh, to watch it. In this one we're going to be talking about the rotary texturing tool. Uh, you can purchase this commercially from, uh, as the Decorating Elf by Henry Taylor, or you can actually make one like I did this one, but more about that later. Well, let's start off with making what, what to me is one of the, my favorite uses of this particular tool, and that's making a flower that might go on the bottom of a box, or on the inside of a lid, or possibly on the top. It could also go on the bottom of the bowl. Uh, it works very well on end grain, but it'll work on side grain on a bowl uh, as well. First thing you're going to do, um, let, let me show, uh, we're going to talk about making this thing later. This is one I made, not, not a commercial one. And uh, but you've got to keep the thing pointed up or it'll spin out. And it's held in place by a little rare earth magnet at the bottom. So you need to drop your tool rest a little bit. And this thing has... Uh, these are Dremel burrs, they're one eighth inch shaft. This is a round one, and I find this one the most useful. I've got a cylinder, but frankly, I haven't found that it does anything special. There's a, a bud or a flame cutter. I'm not sure what it would do, do for me. So, so we're gonna use this one. So the first thing we're gonna do is we've gotta cut a little cove for this to spin in, in order that you can get enough decoration for it to be meaningful. So we're gonna turn this thing, I actually got to raise the tool rest a little bit for this cove, so we'll get speed up a little bit. Uh, I made this tool, this is a one quarter inch to uh, cove tool, you can buy these, but they're easy to make. This is a little brass uh, compression, plumbing compression fitting, um, put that where you can see it. Uh, you, you can click on the link to the videos on making small lathe tools if you want to uh, see details on this. So basically this is acting as a scraper. Uh, I'm just going to come across. Got to come just a bit higher. And we're just going to concave the center just a little bit. We're going to have a little bit higher in the middle as part of the design feature of this thing. A little deeper. Okay, now. I'm going to slow this down. Wouldn't hurt to touch that up with a bit of sandpaper if you're doing this for real, but I'm not. Now we're going to slow this thing down a little bit, and I'm going to get it down to, oh, in this case, about 700, somewhere below 800, 600, 800. Uh, now we're going to put it up and down range. Keep in mind that it doesn't cut on the tip, it cuts on the side, so we're going to angle this at about a 45 degrees. And be patient, you got to leave it, uh, press hard and leave it, give it enough time to, to cut. And you can see the very nice uh, detail that, that it provides. Now we're going to punch that up like we've been doing all along, every time we've got a, got a bit of texture. Now I'm using a vortex tool. And this is again another quarter inch tool uh, with a rounded bottom and a flat uh, flat top. I think you can see that profile. And this is a slicing tool but we're going to use it in just to put a little bit of a detail. It's very deep right here. And it gives you a little deeper detail than I could get with the uh, the point tool. And, but if we want to make a little bead next to it, again, we just come right next to it. Notice where my finger is. Let me back off a little bit so you can see the hand motion on this. So I come in with a finger on top, right next to the other one. I'm going to drop the handle, roll the handle toward the bead, and then just come, off, come across the top. I can go on this side, drop the handle, roll across. So the point doesn't ever cross it, 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 just this edge here acting as a scraper. And it, the easiest way to get a nice, uh, a very nice looking little little bead uh, detail, and that's a nice detail in the bottom of a box. 
uh, we could make that cove, uh, extend that cove by making another one out to the outside. We want a bigger feature. Again, dropping the tool rest. Leaning in here at an angle, press this in. Giving it time to cut. And you can see it gives you some very nice little uh, striations in there. And of course again we can pump up the pump up the volume so to speak by by giving it just a little bit of a detail. Maybe another little bead, drop the handle, roll it over. Drop the handle, roll it toward the bead, and roll it over the top. And that just gives you a very nice detail feature that, that I really like. You could part these off again to make inserts. Now this is on a piece of pretty tough Bradford pear and it cuts it, it, cuts it uh, uh, fairly well. Now let me show you what this thing would look like on the rim of a bowl. Okay, I've got a bowl blank checked up in here. Uh, it hasn't been hollowed, so it's got a lot of mass, and I'm just using this as a, a demo uh, uh, piece. So think of this as a, a border, or this this is a uh, uh, the top rim of the bowl. This could be a rim of the bowl. This this is a, a previously used for the texturing uh, from the spiraling and, and texturing tool. So I've made a little cove in here, so we're going to again uh, drop the tool rest so we've got this pointed up and down range. We're going to slow the speed down a little bit. In this case, uh, just below 500. Uh, and I'm just going to ease into this. Then I'm going to pull it a little bit toward me. Come up that cove a bit. Now let's see what we got. And you can see we've got a, a very nice nice detail uh, here. And we could bound, uh, put a simple uh, punch that up a little bit with his vortex tool by just coming in right next to it. Again, I'm, I'm bringing this in at, at 90 degrees to the wood and just sticking it in there just a bit. Sticking it in there just a bit. Just to give it a little bit of a uh, detail. And yes, y'all can see that fine. Now let's come over here to the edge. Now, it's slightly concave here, but this surface here is, is somewhat flat. Uh, let me actually just take this cold and smooth it a little bit more. So this part right here is fairly flat, so let's just stick it in there and see what it looks like with as a, as a flat not running in a cove. I'm going to put it right here, about 45 degrees. And it gives a very small... Uh, pattern because it's not using the full edge of the ball like it does when it's uh, on a curved surface so uh, that you might find that useful but frankly this is not a whole lot different from using the corner of the uh, spiraling spiraling wheel all right let's talk briefly about making this again you can buy these from Henry Taylor I believe they're about 60 or 65 dollars I know craft supply sells them um, but they're they're not that terribly difficult to make um, I've got an article I wrote that's uh, on my website. You can click the link above and go go to my my blog and download this this article. But it, it's got the pictures of the components: a handle, a piece of pipe nipple, a dowel, uh, a couple of uh, bushings, and a rare earth magnet and a Dremel cutter. Here's a list of the components, the cost of the uh, uh, components, the source of the of the components. You can also buy a kit from Highland Highland Hardware. Uh, for about $30 uh, that gives you everything you need to make, make that, that tool. When I made it, I, I extended the dowel up too, too far. I didn't recess the bushings deep enough so 
this cutter sticks up too proud it, it should have been more like this to be better supported so it's going to have a premature wearing uh, on those bushings but uh, maybe I'll make another one when it wears out now that Bradford pear we just use is a pretty tough wood uh, but let's see what we get when we do it with something a little bit harder. This is some Burmese blackwood. It's not quite as hard as African blackwood, but it's pretty tough. So let's speed this up and let's do a tiny cove in the middle. You can see that cove tool will make it some very nice shading if it's applied correctly and sharp. And you simply sharpen it with a with a razor razor hone. The beauty of this uh, collet is I can use a wrench, take this off, and I'll, I've got a pyramid tool on the other, a point tool on the other side. Okay, I think I've got enough cove to make that work. So we slow the da slow this down, drop the tool rest down. Ease this in, and I'm gonna be patient and hold it while it cuts. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi. Heck, I don't know how long it takes. And you can see, I think you can see that uh, that detail. It worked. It worked pretty well. Now let me show you another little little trick. Now that we've got this, I'm going to put a little bead on it, and we're going to put a little patinating wax on it. Alright, now this is uh, Rub and Buff. You can get this at uh, hobby uh, stores or uh, craft stores like Hobby, hobby Lobby and, and Michaels in the United States. Uh, and it's a metallic, uh, metallic uh, wax. Uh, you can also buy something called Gilder's Paste. Uh, it comes in a little larger container. I know Craft Supply sells them that uh, probably is not a lot more money but you get a whole lot more material now the trick to this stuff is it takes just a small amount and rub it sorry rub it between your fingers until you get it nice smoothed out where you can still see your your fingerprint uh, let me just rub a little bit of excess off of here I think I got a little bit too much and we're just going to uh, by hand rub this in there Now the problem is we've got a little bit too much. Now uh, there's different techniques. I'm going to rub it all the way in and see if I can't clean the top, clean clean it off. Um, and to do that, we're going to use a little micro crystalline or, or type of uh, wax. I haven't tried this before, but I'm going to give it a try. Some neutral uh, shoe polish. It's a little bit dried out, but I think it'll probably work. So I'm just going to put a little of that on here. And then we're going to use this to, to kind of clean up that edge a little bit. And it's not working very well. So let's try a different technique. And believe it or not, this technique I meant to try, we're going to use a little micro crystalline wax polish with Renaissance. And it's got some solvent in it that, that makes a difference. And we're going to use... Uh, what they call a magic eraser. I, I think they also use this for makeup, but it cleans uh, stains off walls. Get just a just a bit on there. Doesn't take much. If I can figure out where it is, just sniff it a little bit, and we're going to turn this up. And you can see with those uh, with that petrochemical volatiles. It really, now I'm going to touch the center, it really cleans it up. I might be able to get some of that surface color out. We'll give it a try by just touching it a little bit and see what we, we get. Maybe that will help it. Now let me see if I can't get you a little, little bit of a close-up there. And you can see how that could add just a little, little bit of pizzazz. Uh, and then, of course, as before, which I didn't do, I told you I was. We're going to put a little bit of a bead right next to it. Now what you have is a nice beautiful little insert. I've got a flat area here. We can just uh, round, finish rounding that off and part that off. And we've got a nice insert for uh, 
the top of a box or you could even put it inside a box if, if you don't want to risk damaging the uh, the box with texturing while you're still working on it so meanwhile we're going to go ahead and just take a spindle roughing gouge and just kind of get the edge around Now we're simply going to uh, part it off, and I'm going to use a fluted gouge so I can get a, get a nice uh, smooth surface. Slow this down just a bit. Get it a bit over. And we're going to uh, do this maybe uh, oh, a little more than a sixteenth of an inch thick. You don't want it too thick. Go in there. Draw up the handle. Of course, we've got to come outside just a little bit, make a little wider part. Now I'm going to slightly concave this this end because I don't want the center to uh, stick up. I want this to be able to float around the edges when we uh, make put in that insert. And before I part it off, I want to take take just make this slightly larger on the outside and a little bit uh, uh, concave down, just, just tapered down just slightly where it'll fit in easily uh, as it goes in that insert recess and, and not show around the outside edge. Now let's go ahead and come back and finish parting that off. And there we've got a very nice little uh, uh, textured little flower uh, detail that we can put inside a box. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this series on on texturing and, and finding it uh, finding it useful and and as much fun as I've enjoyed uh, making it. If you do like it, please hit the subscribe button and and become a subscriber. And I, I just don't thank y'all often uh, often enough, all my viewers, for how much uh, I appreciate you and for helping me grow my grow my channel. The next video, uh, which I'll publish next week, is going to be on the, uh, the Wagner tool, so stay tuned.